Welcome to KetoMealsAndRecipes.com. To help you prepare for the holidays, today I will be sharing with you two absolutely delicious and beautiful designs for my keto butter cookies, which are sugar-free and gluten-free. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make my Christmas tree and teddy bear cookies. I really had a lot of fun making these cute cookies, but leave me a comment and let me know which one you think is the, the cuter of the two. Because this is not only a recipe video, but a demonstration video, I hope that you watch the entire video because the written description is just not enough to get all the fine details. And if you make these cookies, do make some extra ones and give them to someone who you can brighten up their day and share with. And if you like cookies, do check out the end links for more tasty cookie ideas. The macronutrient ratio for these keto butter cookies is 5.3 to 1 with 1.8 grams of total carbs, 0.5 grams of soluble fiber, 0.7 grams of insoluble fiber, resulting in 0.6 grams of net carbs per delicious cookie. So let's get started and make these light, melt-in-your-mouth butter cookies. Before starting any recipe, I always assemble and weigh out all of my ingredients. And the next thing I do is I get my large mixing bowl or you can use a stand mixer bowl, to which you add the room temperature butter. If you're using a stand mixer, like I am, use a paddle attachment. Then beat for two to three minutes and until the butter is at the pale yellow stage. As you notice, the butter likes to stick to the inside of the bowl, so do stop and scrape the butter at least once or twice before adding the sweetener. You should grind your sweetener to fine confectioner powder. It will blend better. Then continue beating for about one more minute. While you're beating, drop in the lemon zest and your vanilla. Sorry about this, but the video portion where I added the vanilla was very blurry, but I did add it at this point. And just continue beating for one more minute. The next step is to whisk your eggs very well before adding them to the butter mixture. And again, do stop and scrape the bowl. Now pour in your whisked eggs and continue beating until well combined. Having done that, it's now time to add the dry ingredients. Start by adding the almond flour and beat to combine. Next, you can either add coconut flour or substitute the coconut flour with whey protein powder. And lastly, add the glucomannan also known as konjac root powder, and the salt which you ground to a fine powder. And continue beating for about one minute to ensure that everything is well combined and the batter is smooth and very velvety. Because I will need several different colors for my cookie creations, I first weigh and then divide the dough into two equal quantities. Then taking one half of the dough, I remove about one quarter to about one third of a cup of the dough and put that into a separate smaller bowl. To the smaller bowl, I add the red gel food color. Fold and hand knead to color the dough so that it's not streaky, then set that aside. For the second half of the cookie dough, I remove about one quarter cup of dough and put that into a separate smaller bowl and set that aside for a moment. To the larger quantity of dough, I now add the green gel food color and work it in in the same way you did the red. Next, to the one quarter cup of dough that you reserved, I'm going to add my Dutch processed cocoa powder and work it in to make a nice deep brown color. Now that I have all my dough portions in the colors that I will need, it's time to make the teddy bears. To make the head of the teddy bear, I'm going to scoop up one tablespoon of the cream colored dough and roll it into a nice smooth ball. When you have rolled the ball, place it onto your parchment lined baking sheet and gently press down to flatten into an even thickness disc shape. To make the muzzle, I scoop out one half teaspoon of dough and roll it into a ball. Then place this medium sized ball on top and at the bottom edge of the flattened disc and press gently just a little bit to make the muzzle shape. 
And of course, you need two ears for the teddy bear, so scoop out one teaspoon of dough, divide it into two, roll it into balls, position the two smaller balls as ears on the disc. Using your finger, gently press down to make an indentation for the ear. And that's how you make the shape of the bear head. And then just repeat until you've completed making all of your bears. The final step before baking is to make the hat. For the hat, scoop out about one teaspoon of the red dough, pinch off a tiny bit, which you will use to make the hat rim. Roll the red dough into a short pointy cone. With your finger, gently press down on the cone to flatten it so it's the same thickness as the head and then take the tip and just bend it at a 45 degree angle. Take this hat shape and place it between the teddy bear's ears. Now get that little bit of pinched red dough that you reserved and roll it into a short little tube and place this between the ears and at the bottom of the hat. And please make a hat for each of the teddy bears. After all, you don't want their little heads to get cold. After making each of the teddy bears, Place the sheet with the teddy bears into the freezer for 10 minutes. Chilling the dough is very, very important. Otherwise, your dough will spread and flatten because of all the butter in the recipe. You will end up with a very tasty but somewhat dysmorphic looking teddy bear. When your dough is chilled, bake in a preheated oven set to 350 Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 to 12 minutes. Set your timer and when it goes off, remove immediately. Don't be tempted to bake any longer. And leaving the cookies on the cookie sheet, let them cool to room temperature before transferring each of the cookies onto a wire cooling rack. Although these bears are quite cute at this stage, we're not quite done. So when my cookies are completely cooled, it's time to add the facial features. I'm going to use melted dark chocolate for best result, use some sort of skewer or toothpick or dowel with a very fine tip. Dab the tip in the chocolate and very carefully add the two eyes. And then I dab a bit of brown to position the nose in the center of the muzzle. I'd like to share a bit of advice. After you dab your skewer or dowel or whatever you're using into the chocolate, let any drips fall back into the bowl before you put it over the teddy bear's face because if it drips, you won't be able to get it off and it will ruin your creation. And for this last part, I'm going to use a toothpick because I really want to draw a very thin line to make the smiling mouth. To make the mouth, just start at the nose and make two little U shapes, one on either side. I think that these Christmas bears look absolutely amazing. What do you think? While I was making these special cookies, I had one serious problem. I felt guilty biting into the cookies because they look so cute. But as cute as they look, they taste even better. As my final decoration for these teddy bears, I'm going to use my toothpick and dip it into the white chocolate. And I dab a bit of the white chocolate at the tip of the hat to make a bobble. I then also use the toothpick dipped in chocolate to make a thin line of white that looks like fur on the hat. I think these Christmas bears look absolutely amazing. Next, I will demonstrate how to make the 3D Christmas trees. Begin by scooping out one tablespoon of your green dough and rolling it into a 14 inch or 35.5 centimeter tube. I'm going to start by making the bottom of the tree which is about two and a half to two and a half inches or about five to six point five centimeter base row. Then take your tube and fold back and forth in a descending width to form the triangle shape. If your tube should break as you're going back and forth, don't worry. Just reattach the dough where it broke off and continue. At this point you might be thinking, why go through all this trouble? You could just roll out the dough and use a Christmas tree shaped cookie cutter. Yes, you could do that, but I really wanted to make these 3D Christmas trees to go with my 3D teddy bears. The other thing is, to make these cookies, you don't need any special equipment or cookie cutouts or anything. Just your imagination. To continue with the Christmas tree and make the trunk, 
scoop out one teaspoon of the brown dough and roll it into a ball, then flatten it into a short tube. Position this tube as the tree trunk at the bottom and center of the green portion. Then use a fork to press gently down on the brown dough to make the bark texture. I wanted to make a decorated Christmas tree, so as an option, if you want, and if you have any of the red dough left over, just take tiny portions of the red dough and make very tiny little balls and position them as Christmas ornaments on the tree. And as with the teddy bears, after you have made all of your trees, place the trees on a parchment lined cookie sheet and place this sheet of cookies into the freezer for 10 minutes. At which point put the sheet of cookies into your preheated oven and bake for 10 to 12 minutes. Once the Christmas tree cookies are done, take them out of the oven and let them rest in the cookie sheet until they're at room temperature before transferring them onto the cooling rack. The final steps are completely optional, but I wanted to show you what I do. I'm going to use my melted white chocolate and dip the side of the Christmas tree into the white chocolate. I do this to both sides of the cookie. Then using my toothpick, I'm going to add little lines as if there was some more snow on the branches. I have to admit, I really love decorating these cookies. It was so much fun. I'm going to share a Christmas tradition that we enjoy in our family. Even though my children are all adults now, we still leave out cookies and milk for Santa. So I hope that this year when Santa visits, he will enjoy these beautiful looking cookies. I would love to hear what your Christmas traditions are, so please leave me a comment. If you do make these cookies ahead of time, or if you have any extra left over, these cookies can be stored in an airtight container on your counter for a few days. Alternatively, you could freeze the cookies. I hope that you have found this butter cookie recipe something you might like to try and the instructions for how to make the teddy bears and Christmas trees helpful. And do let me know if you ended up making any of these cookies for Christmas. I would like to wish you and all of your loved ones a very happy and healthy Christmas. To everyone, happy holidays.